So, how's my big adventure game project doing? Over the past few weeks, I've mostly been working on pulling the pieces together to get from a prototype to an actual storytelling experience. There's a draft of a prologue now. It sets the scene, a world inhabited by animals and robots, and most importantly introduces Amy, the character we'll be playing, as well as her mission, save her mechanical best friend. This is all done in Blender and Grease Pencil, which was pretty exciting and new for me too. If you'd like to learn more about my process, let me know, I might make a video about it. I have also added this little cinematic cutscene to ease players into the game. Now, all of this is far from done, but it adds a lot to the experience already and makes me feel a whole lot better about the game. On the UI side, I improved on the inventory that you can see at the top of the screen. It's a small change, but it goes a long way to make the game feel more like, well, a real game. My proudest technical achievement this week actually was the implementation of this 3D overlay for the close-up view of inventory items that you can see here. This wasn't actually very hard to do, but rather painful to figure out, so let me explain this for you Unreal Engine devs out there. Essentially, I've set up this little photoshoot stage where I can place the actors that I want to display in the overlay. These planes aren't going to be visible, I have just added them for testing the setup. The most important part of this is this virtual camera here, which is a scene capture component 2D. You can use this component to render a part of your scene into a texture. All you need to do is to create a texture render target 2D asset, like this one, which still displays the last object that was rendered into it during gameplay. To get this to work as intended, you need to set up a few important properties on the scene capture component. Most importantly, select the use show only list here, which makes the component capture only a number of specified actors. In my blueprint, I set the contents of this array to an actor that I spawned from the inventory item description. You can then capture the scene by calling the capture scene function on the component like this. Make sure you also uncheck these options here to avoid the component capturing frames continuously and automatically. To render your actor onto a transparent background, go to the general show flag section and most importantly uncheck atmosphere and anything else you don't need. As you can see here, I basically just have static meshes left enabled. Now the astoundingly tricky part is how to get the transparency working correctly in the UI. If you look at the capture source dropdown, you will see a long list of options and unfortunately none of those are really what we want. The closest match is this one here, which stores the inverse opacity in the alpha channel. So what that does, if we look at our render target texture and check the alpha channel here, is basically a hole where the object is and everything around it is opaque. Which is just the opposite of what we want. So how do we invert the alpha channel to display the texture in an image widget? As it turns out, if you look at the image brush, you can not only select a texture to render, but also a material which is pretty cool and allows us to solve our problem. The material setup is that simple. It's just the fixed render target that you can see here. There's not even a need to have a parameter for it. And all we need to do is invert the alpha channel and feed it into the opacity. The one important thing to consider to make the one minus X expression work is the format of a render target texture. So if you look here, I chose the RGBA8 option, which ensures that the channels are in the range from 0 to 1. And that's all for today. I'm still experimenting with the format of the series, so if you have any suggestions or like to have more information about anything in particular, let me know. Hope to see you for the next update. Bye!